you were outstanding. I couldn't it, like you, you, your enunciations, the voice, everything, the voices, character voice, etc. It really just sucks you in. I'm telling you, it didn't even sound like my book. I actually enjoyed it again. So I was sitting there reading along my own book, listening to you, you know, for all the files. I was just like, this is really uh, amazing. It really brings it to life. It's, it's pretty cool. Merrick had never seen such fog. It loomed ahead as if the gods had poured a thick cloud upon the earth. It seemed a living thing, twisting slowly, devouring itself. The Order of Preceptors had not written much of this place, but whispers of its past were steeped in mystery and legend among darker tales. This giant's breath, as some call it, made those tales seem more believable. What are we doing here? Mitchell, his apprentice, asked from the back of his horse. You know damn well why we're here, said Merrick. No, why are we here? We volunteered, remember? You volunteered. Merrick looked over to him. Mitch, you've always wanted to go on these wanderings as much as I have. We get to travel and meet interesting people. In return, we simply have to report back the condition of roads and any specifics worth noting to the council. Mitch rolled his eyes. And sleep on the ground most nights. Is there some other reason you would rather be home? Do the stories of this place scare you? Mitch did not respond. Is it my sister? Merrick prodded. Why would you say that? I see the way you look at her. Mitch looked to the aisle ahead. A shire? Nonsense. Merrick smiled as Mitch's cheeks turned a rosy red. So whereabouts are you? I am uh, right above Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, now I had yeah. some friends. Uh, you'll have to excuse my my geography of the United States. Um, no, no, that's fine. They were in one of one of the Carolinas. Did you say you were in yeah, Charlotte? About, uh, right above Charlotte, yeah, North right Carolina. Right above Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, a couple of friends of mine, Gene and Julie Gates, used to do a breakfast radio show in Charlotte. They got oh, fired. Nice. I forget the name of the station. <laughs> they got fired. Yeah, well, they're in radio. It's yeah. an occupational hazard. Yeah, you know? it's, it's yeah. Basically... I have heard. Yeah, <laughs> it's just. No, I, I worked in Charlotte for many, many years before I went over full time doing YouTube and content creation and streaming and all that stuff. I worked there in IT for fifteen years or whatever. So uh, I'm I'm a country boy. If, if you can't hear it, my voice. <laughs> so <laughs> I stay away from cities. I like to visit them, but I like yeah. you know I call I call it the concrete jungle. Okay. So I'll just stay out, I'll stay out here in the woods, you know. <laughs> so whereabouts were you born? Uh, right here. Always been here. Right. So um, you're I, in I, you're in your home you're in your own on your home patch. Yeah, I am. I am home turf. Yep. Right. I only lived um, I only lived a couple other places. You know, went off to college for, but that's the, that was in North Carolina, but four hours towards the coast, and then uh, a couple years in South Carolina when I was doing some little business things. But other than that, I've been here my entire life. Right. Okay, so as a kid, what were you reading then? What were your major influences? Well, uh, I don't, I don't know. I was uh, always a movie buff. Um, right. I was definitely always uh, uh, attracted to stories. My dad took me to see Star Wars in '78, the first time in a theater. I was what, you know, a couple years old, and uh, I was hooked. I was hooked ever since, and I, I was a huge movie buff. And I read some things here and there, but I was more of you know movies and behind the scenes and. Uh, I actually wanted to go to film school and actually was, was going to go to film school at one point to uh, North Carolina School of the Arts up here in Winston-Salem, about an hour and a half away. And uh, I did get accepted, but uh, it was uh, it was like 70 grand. And I was like, eh, <laughs> I can't, can't yeah. pull that one. So I just went the kind of traditional route, but uh, I, I left school early and decided to get into IT. And I realized I didn't need a full uh, degree for that. It was more of a um, uh, you know, certifications, that type of thing as well. So ended up, you know, just kind of doing my own thing after that. But uh, yeah, I was always attracted to stories. I did write a little bit as a, as a kid. I wrote some kind of fan fiction stuff around Star Wars and then some, some of my own stuff. Um, but I never really knew I was a writer until the last couple of years when I started really kind of getting into it and learning, you know, kind of looking up tips and tricks and, and um, 
writing advice stuff, and uh, I think it I think it turned out okay. So it far. turned out great. I mean, I mean, here's the here's the result right here. This is how okay yeah, it turned out. Yeah, I'm glad you got this. Thank, thank, thank God, goodness, you got your book. I was so worried about shipping. I was so worried about. <laughs> it's shipping. It's a long way. It came a long, it is. long well, way. That right now everything's so screwed up, you know. And uh, I sent like seventy books to around to people around the U.S. and I think I had twelve or fourteen overseas and three in Australia. And uh, the cost was insane, number one. But they were I telling it me it was like seven to twenty-one days. Yeah, and I was like, please don't let lost. <laughs> you know, in the so you switched <laughs> from from IT to doing something incredibly creative. Now I'm guessing the the whole left brain, right brain thing. Now right. I don't I don't know which one is which. I forget now. But the yeah, basic, the yeah. way I I understand them is one is Spock and one is Kirk. And yes. So yes. so basically you went. From something from IT, you went from yes. something completely that gives you complete freedom of creation to IT. I'm guessing, well, it, it's binary, isn't it? When it all comes down to it, it really is. I think I, I'm very odd. I, I've always said that I'm kind of a hybrid. Uh, my whole family is full of artists. Um, like I can draw and paint and all that kind of stuff. My cousins are on both sides of my family do. So I've always been to that stuff as well. But I've always been like an athlete and book nerd you know what i mean um I, I did fine in school i had no problem with that so i've always got this left rant. i think it's a good balance i would say <laughs> if i can pat myself on the back you know um but yeah it was it was very analytical I'm, i am a very logical person um but i just have this creative side and like you said when i was in it i just started watching youtube and saw people breaking down these shows this nerdy stuff that i enjoyed yeah um that i call nerdy stuff so me and my friends would go to the movies you know We'd do the midnight movie. It was kind of our tradition. We'd stand out in the parking lot and talk about it for a couple hours. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I can do this on YouTube. I can create this kind of virtual campfire and have people talk about these nerdy things that I enjoy because not a lot of people did in my in my circle. Yeah. So that was like just kind of a hobbyist at first. And then things started kind of taking off. I was like, oh, okay. This is there's a lot of people who want to talk about this stuff. Yeah. So there here so we are. So what's the name know? of it? You're still doing stuff? What's the name of it? The one yeah, that you're currently uh, doing? The, the, yeah, the channel name is Smokescreen on YouTube. Um, Smokescreen, yeah. Smokescreen, all one word. And, uh, it, you know, I, I had different ideas in the, in the beginning, so don't ask me about the name. It was just a combination of something, a couple of things, but it sounded cool, you yeah. know. Um, but, yeah, so I started, you know, doing all kinds of TV shows and movie reviews and, stuff, and things like that. But then when I got into Game of Thrones, that's when really I could see some traction. And so yeah. I kind of ended up in the fantasy realm, which is my favorite anyway. Yeah. And uh, really, really fell in love with it. Went back to the books and reread those a million times and kind of really got involved in Westeros, um, breaking down things, theories, all that kind of stuff. So I've always been involved in stories in some way, I think. Yeah, there is a lot of the the Game of Thrones vibe in the Crimson Gods. Was that, was that a major yeah. influence? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. I didn't go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to do that. There are definitely some shout-outs uh, to other things, to uh there's some there's some little lines in there i think uh I'll, i'm waiting for people to pick up on them to see uh but yeah i i think um the medieval aspect for sure i just yeah. love the medieval aspect of things uh medieval european history but i did bring in a lot of other mythology from all around the world as far as some of the names it, you know that you probably remember now um so i was really interested in having that setting but doing this different thing without it without spoiling anything um without telling you what it was, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, do. I don't want to give too much away, though, you know, because there's yeah, so many yeah, yeah. twists in it that it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's really amazing when they pop up and you go, oh, wow. And you have to rethink a few things. You have to go right, back and go, right. oh, so that's what that was going on. That's what he, that's what he was. Oh, OK. Yeah, right. Yeah. And there's the few, idea. So I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad it worked <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. And there's a, there's a few people who. Uh, in all stories that don't make it to the end uh i don't want mm -hmm. and and you don't i don't want to spoil any of that but a few of those are quite shocking along the way right. and the way they go too it's quite brutal you, get, <laughs> you gotta make it realistic you know yeah. um, that is definitely a george r, r. martin influence um, right. if you're familiar with game of thrones you know what you think is a main character which he is is gone the first the first book yeah or the yeah, first yeah. season whichever yeah. one you're looking at so yeah. sure yeah i mean you know because I don't, I mean, I'm a sci-fi buff as well, but I don't like the whole resurrection thing or multiverse type stuff as much because it can, it takes the punch out of those type of things. 
Right. You know what I yeah. mean? Uh, if you have somebody can just come back by magic or, you know, do sex mocking or whatever. Travel in time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it takes away the, you know, oh, that's not, you know, he can come back or she can come back. So, uh, yeah, definitely a, a germ influence there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems, you know, a lot of people who have got like day jobs then kind of do their passion on the side. Um, yeah. In this country, yeah. we call the—I don't know if you have this in America—we call them anoraks. Someone. No, so, I've heard of this. Oh yeah, well, there might be someone who's like—I don't know—someone who might work in a bank, for instance. Right. But he's really into trains, so he spends all his weekends, yeah. you know, going to places where there's different locomotives and stuff. But he doesn't actually work for the railways. You know what I mean? And right, so they right, would be right. described as an anorak, a, a train spot as an anorak. So, but yeah. you you decided that wasn't enough for you that you you actually yeah. quit and turned pro that must have been quite a big life because i know you've got a kid you it know was. you've got responsibilities you, you, yes, you that yes. must have been a pivotal a pivotal moment in your life talk me through that process it, it really was um I, i've always been kind of this um i don't know if you want to say free spirit but i've always wanted to work for me and i've, yeah. I've done smaller things in the past i've I ran a martial arts dojo for a few years and the yeah. economy crashed. I was back in 2008. So I did some things on my own in the past, but I really just have this thing against uh, not working for other people, but working for other people's dreams, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so when I was in and I loved, I was I left Microsoft. Was, that's where I worked. I was at Microsoft for oh, six years. Right. You think so, that's, just, that's, you know, yeah, people would I left. If you're going to work in IT, that's one of the places to work. <laughs> that's where you want to be, right? I mean, that was the kind of the goal. Uh, when I got into IT, I'm going to end up working for the the, the big company, um, the Microsoft, the, kind of the uh, what pushes out everything. And so I, I, I made it there. I set that goal. I got there. But then after – and I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. But after the, uh, these other things started creeping in, I was just like, I can't sit here – because it was very comfortable, a uh, comfortable living. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, after that many years of experience. So uh, I decided, you know what, I just I'll work for for me. I'll, I'll not work for somebody else's dream, if that makes sense. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, but I just always had that kind of um, like like I'm sure my parents didn't love me when I was <laughs> when I was getting out of high school and decided to leave college and all this stuff for because I left college to start a small business. Did you? Um, in South, that's what I was telling you. When in South Carolina for a couple of years, didn't work out, but I can say I tried. You yeah, know, that's been my whole thing. Is just, um, I just got. I feel like you got to do what you enjoy and whatever that is. If you find a passion or a purpose, I think you're really lucky. Yeah, and I will take a, a less comfortable living, at least for a while, temporarily until I, I get there. If I can, if I can do what I want to do, is the way. Yeah, I'm. you mentioned your parents there. Uh, yeah. Some people I've spoken to when I've done these interviews with authors, some, not all. <laughs> uh, and I know a lot of people in the business I was in full time, now I only dabble in radio, um, who had issues with parents. And it's what led them to a more creative uh, type of existence. In fact, one of the authors I spoke to, she she dedicates that she has a dedication in the beginning of her book to her dad, and it's not a nice one. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Although he died two years previous, I don't know if she'd have put that in there if he was still alive. But um, right, right. How, how was? Were there any issues there, or did you find anything through that experience that that pushed um, you the way you went? There were not. I wouldn't say major issues. There was definitely the you know do the traditional thing which you're supposed to do, and mm -hmm. I always put that in quote air quotes. You know, you get you get out of high school, you go to college, you get a good job, you work there for fifty years and retire, and then you're too old to do anything. And I just <laughs> I've never agreed with that. You know, yeah. I just really haven't. Even though I did that for the most part, yeah. because like you said, I, I have a twenty one now. She's twenty one, but yeah, um, you know, I had a oh, daughter. She's more than a kid then, right? I see. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, she's still a kid. Yeah, you know, okay. she, she's still a kid and still getting in trouble. No, no. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, you know, I went through all those motions. Obviously, I had responsibility, and I did enjoy IT, and, and I enjoyed picking apart that world, that digital world, and fixing things. That's kind of what I enjoy doing. But I've just always been, you know, I don't need to do it this way. I can find my own way in, in, in some aspects. So that's always been a part of me. As a matter of fact, we were talking about the, the book earlier. Um, I did start writing really, I don't know, I probably was – 24 25 years old i started writing this 
nonfiction book. I never finished it. I wrote a couple of chapters and as, as a lot of people do when they say they want to write a book. Um, but it was about, I think I had called it dream warriors. It was about like a gen X thing, like uh, how we thought differently than doing the traditional thing of, of, you know, going to school and, you know, getting married, having kids in that particular order, you know yeah. what I mean? So I had started little things before and just never, never finished them, of course. But finally I was like, you know, I'm going to finish this, this damn thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it, you've been around the sixties or seventies, it would have been rock and roll, but the eighties and nineties yeah, yeah. and early two thousands, it was it, wasn't it? That was the, yeah, it really the cutting was. edge. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that was the thing I was going into, uh, the military was the idea. And then, uh, my dad, you know, my whole family had been military, uh, on both sides and my dad actually being a marine himself um taught me out of it and said no computers are the future he had a, he had me on a computer from the time the commodores came out back in the day um right. not and, the and band stuff like by that. the way the computer yeah, yeah the, the computer commodore 64 yeah let me <laughs> <Yes>. clarify <laughs> yeah wasn't lionel richie he had nothing to do with exactly. this <laughs> hey lionel richie is still one of my favorite by the way uh, but yes he really did he 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 was like yeah Look, uh, you know, do what you want to do, obviously, but these are the these things are the future. Um, this is going to be where you make the most money, that type of thing. So he yeah. kind of pushed me in that direction. And that's kind of what happened. Yeah. So he was looking out for you. Yeah. He was. Yeah. He really was. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Um, sure. Because, you know, I don't know anything about working in IT, but I but I'm guessing and tell me if I'm wrong that there would have been a certain grounding there to do with you mentioned problem solving and also yes. structure and scheduling that would help you out as a writer, I would have thought. Yeah. Now it might be counterintuitive, but you've got to have a structure. You're going to come up against yes. problems you've got to solve. Uh, I would have thought that there'd be a good, good, good foundation there for, for what you ended up doing. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. But now that you say that like that, yeah, it, it makes sense. I mean, there is it's definitely a very structured rule-based environment and that type of thing that you have to really think through and that's what i enjoyed about it actually um funny thing is as far as a writer goes i found myself to be more of the quote-unquote gardener variety i don't do these long drafts i do kind of general outlines mm -hmm. really i mean really limited um when i started this book for example the the pro what ended up being the prologue just kind of came to me so i was lucky in that aspect and i was like let's do this, this, and this, and then we'll do this at the end. And that'll be kind of a shock um, without, again, spoiling anything. But um, so I wrote a few chapters, not really sure what it was. And I was like, ah, let's do this and kind of figure out an ending and then kind of work towards that. So I didn't have these, like, I didn't have this long outline. I just had really a rough outline with really bullet points and kind of wrote between them. So I, I, I'm, I'm not in, in retrospect, looking back as you think, yeah, you would, you know, because I, I know most people like to lay out a book and plan it and everything, but I just kind of let it come to me uh, in a sense. But I'm, I, I guess I'm kind of a hybrid as far as uh, the plotter versus the pantser type. So, uh, so how early in the, the planning stage then of the Crimson Gods did you work out the end? Because at the end, you tie up a lot of loose ends. What, what, uh, what, I how, would say how early about, into it did you, did you work out where it was going? I would say about three or four chapters in, I knew it was going to be this type of book with these mythological happenings that we won't spoil. Yeah. So I knew that aspect of it. And then as I worked through, I wouldn't prob uh, I wouldn't say quite halfway. I was like, okay, this is how it's got to end because okay. I had this prophecy thing in there. If you remember. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to make that um, not necessarily exactly uh, correct but i want it to be kind of a, a a metaphorical and some actual things that happen with that whole prophetic thing and I, I i i decided the ending then and then once i had that it was really clear it was mm -hmm. just kind of all in my head i just had all this up here and so i would do these um one note files i had uh, i used a couple other websites kind of almost like my own little wiki and started getting all this out of my head <laughs> and then like I said, wrote between those bullet points, you know, and to that ending. So, uh, you know, about, I would say a quarter way through yeah. when I just didn't really know exactly what it was yet. And I was like, oh, here we go. And so that's it. And that's what I wrote towards. Wow. And once you have that ending, you yeah. really can fill in the gaps. Yeah. But I, 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 I don't know about writing a book either. I mean, I don't know much about anything to be honest with you, but <laughs> when I was reading the book, 
you know, you know having, having read the book, I went away and thought, oh, that's really smart. He knew exactly where that was going from the beginning. But no, it's three or four. The first three or four, yeah. you were just... What we were just yeah. learning who the characters were, what motivated yeah. them, the relationships between each other, and all that. You were just basically, a, 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 to use a phrase again, a foundation. And from then on, then it took off to where it, where it had to go. Yes, uh, exactly. So I was going through kind of learning, you know, who these characters are, answering my own questions about them, you know, things like that. And then what, the fun part, the enjoyable part for me, was going back into the drafts. And I had, I think, seven or eight drafts before I sent it off to editing. Uh, and putting in that foreshadowing and those little clues and hints and things like that pointing towards the end and other things. Yeah. So that yeah. was the fun part. I think if people, and I've told people close to me um, uh, that read it once or, you know, one time and they seem to enjoy it, but said, if you go back and glance through it again, you'll, you'll start seeing all these, these clues, the foreshadowing, the, the it's all right there. Even in the prologue, there's some lines that point to, uh, the the ending or or close to the ending or what it's about in general. So I, that was my favorite part for sure was the 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 secret stuff, the foreshadowing hints and all that stuff and little lines here and there that that uh <laughs> that point to what's going on. And it, so I, you know, I, it's it's sorry. What were you gonna say? Oh no, I was gonna say because I used to when I was telling you about art back in the day. Um, I used to like to hide stuff in my drawings. You did. And so it was, just, it was the same thing for writing. <laughs> yeah, that was just my favorite part. Yeah, little clues in here. So, right, little lines, little lines. And is there anything from? I mean, it's a medieval dark fantasy, and you don't live in a medieval dark world. I'm guessing. Um, uh, no, no. It, but is there anything from from your life and experience and things that happened to you that you you used to put in there? I think for sure there's a little bit of that. You know, they say uh, for some reason there's some unwritten rule about don't put yourself in your novel, but there's always a little bit of yourself in there. There, there are there are situations. You know, whether it's some of the the side kind of romance uh, aspects of it or or whatever. I think there's a little bit of me and everybody in that in that book and people I know as well. Um, so I, I don't think you can write a realistic. Um, I think at least trying to be well-developed character without pulling from your experience. I just don't think you can, mm. um, unless you're going completely far sci-fi robotic, something without emotion, mm. you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I believe there's, uh, some aspects I didn't plan that, but yeah. sure, there was certain, certain experiences that I certainly drew from, um, and thought about later. That was like, yeah, that's probably me. <laughs> that, probably, that, that happened to me in some way, <laughs> maybe not in the medieval fantasy setting, but you know, yeah. um, for sure. For but sure. that's it with art, you know. You, you know, painters are taking stuff from you know Rembrandt and Picasso, or whatever, and, it, and it, it finds its way into their work. And musicians, especially, oh yeah, you know they'll yeah. you know you you know Led's, there'd be no Led Zeppelin without the blues or or the Rolling Stones, that's right. you know. So that's right. that, that's kind of how that works. Is there a character in the book that is closest to you? Um, I think a little bit of both Sirik and Ashea. Yeah, uh, Amari, Amari too. Uh, actually, um, yeah. he was one of my favorites to write. Actually, even though he's 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 one of the the three main ones, but he's obviously not got the main beats in the story. But um, yeah, like Sarah, the aspect yeah. of the aspect of Amari was that he's kind of like not be, like we talked about, kind of not the traditional guy in here. He wants to just do his own thing and not be involved in some way. Um, but Sirik for sure, you know, temptations and things like that, and then. Um, Ashea for sure. There's some things in there that uh that I can relate to. Um, yeah. Especially with the Mitch situation. This yeah. kind of a side side well, story there. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mitch is Mitch is smitten, isn't he? Poor guy. Yeah, he he is. He is. <laughs> yeah. And I think we've all been in Mitch's shoes. You know, I think we have. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll make sense when people read the book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been Mitch at some point. But it made them very, it made the, when you did things like that, it making them flawed in the way you did, it made them very real, very real. You know, that's, you, uh, I, I really appreciate it. I mean, I was so nervous about this whole thing because I thought that people reading early drafts, like I had um, some supporters from YouTube and uh, on my Patreon page, they were reading and helping out with, um, you know, early drafts. And I was just like, hey, just give me feedback. This is not the final product. Don't worry about the well-written aspect. Just give it the general big picture things. 
And I was so worried that uh, it wouldn't be, that would be robotic or, you know, something. So I'm glad that I was afraid people were being nice. Honestly, I was afraid <laughs> right, people okay. because, you know, you, you got to get your work out to people that you don't know. You really do. Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, they're being too nice because I had my buddy James, who I do the podcast with. He was kind of my my alpha reader the whole time I was doing it. So I would have a few chapters. He had come over. Hey, you got any more? And I would let him read it and he would, you know, give me feedback. And it, it was really helpful. And, and I thought he was being super nice. Yeah. Uh, but now that I see reviews kind of starting to trickle in now that it's live, I'm like, people kind of enjoy this. I think it's okay. So I don't feel like an imposter. You know, you got that imposter syndrome with, you, with anything you start, I guess. Yeah. So I feel better about it. I'm sure, I'm glad people are enjoying it, but I, I still am afraid people are being too nice because I do have a little bit of an audience on YouTube and I don't want them to just like it because it's me. You know what I mean? So Yeah, I don't think they're going to go. They, yeah, I think if you ask enough people, I think you'll find out. You'll find yeah, out what yeah. you want to hear, but you'll also find out what you don't want to hear. That, 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 is that might be true. what you need to hear but uh you do you i, I do. think it's a, i think it's a great book tell me about the world that it's set in because in the in the print version you you, you don't, obviously you don't get this in the the audio book version but in the print version there's a map pretty early on which lays yeah, yeah, out I've, the it lays out where is it here it, there's a yeah, i mean you probably can't see it on the screen but you know, it's it's yeah. quite it's quite a, a detailed map of where everything yeah. is, and I and I know when I was doing the audio book, I would refer to the map, particularly because you know they would travel north, and north was was slightly different, and then was, just to get right. just to get the vibe of it. So so tell me about that world. Where does is it based on anywhere real? No, uh, honestly, I was literally just a few chapters in. I knew the name of the 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 continent. Mm -hmm. And I literally pulled out a big uh, sketch pad and sketched that map out. Right. And it's still in my closet right over here. And I got a whole pile of the original papers and ideas and sketching, you know, stuff like that. So I pulled that out and I was like, you got to have a fantasy map. With a fantasy book, you got to have a map. If you're yeah. doing a Tolkien-esque style world, you got to yeah. have a map. Yeah. So I sketched that out. And what I would do is as I went through and wrote and I would name a new location just to kind of help world build or whether I was going to actually visit that location in the book or not, I would go plot it out on that map and I would start to research names and, and all that kind of stuff. And so it didn't really change much, but when it came down time to actually get the book published and all that, I went to a professional cartographer who did a great job on that map right there. Yeah. She did a, she did a colored version for me um, that I'll have on the wall here soon. I don't know if you can see the poster back there. That's the, the cover. So I have a, one about that big, a map printed out, but she did that uh, black and white version for the map as well. But uh, I just, yeah, I just don't think you can have a fantasy book without a map. You yeah. got to be able to look up these weird names and say, wait a minute, where are they at here in relation yeah. to Yeah, especially to when they're going on a journey, which they do, you know. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's one thing, too, I tried to add a little bit of um, not just adventure of them just traveling and things obviously happen on the road and stuff, but I, I, I one of the things uh, i know you didn't ask me this but it just kind of popped in my head but um theodore's chapters were really fun for me it was like the the goonies okay. it reminded me at one of my favorite old school movies this adventure this you know it, it's not a treasure adventure obviously in the book but it's essentially the same thing this little adventure of this you know kind of secret location so i tried to mix a, a lot of i had a lot of different obviously influences and, and so i tried to mix all this kind of stuff in there and and I thought what I thought was an original way. So hopefully people were enjoying that. It is good. Or, I had, or will enjoy it. I had one moment that you don't hear in the audio book and you didn't hear in any of the files I sent you for approval because I, I fixed it beforehand. It just reminded me with Theodore. Yeah. Uh, there was one there was one in the manuscript that I got and I don't know how it's formatted or whatever. The word Theodore at one stage was hyphenated because the T T H E was on one line and the Odor was on oh, the other line. Yes. And yes. I, and when I read it, I read the odor. <laughs> and I had I went, that's not right. right. And then oh I see what I've done here. Yeah. Right, and, right, and I, right. I had to fix that. But there was only me would have enjoyed that uh that that private little moment. But it is uh, it is a great book. Hey, yeah, it, have you ever thought about doing outtakes? Like YouTube videos? I should videos? do that's, you should do outtakes. That's a good idea because it would be really, it should be pretty easy to because I'm recording the audio anyway, 
But I could right. record it even as a video, and then you could see my face when I screw something up. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I, I look, I, I don't do audio books, um, but I've had, I've got enough. I'm, I'm on videos. I would have an outtake real five minutes long for each video I do, <laughs> because I'm just, I, I've never written a script. I always just have bullet points, and I will just screw shit up all day. <laughs> well, and then, so yeah, that would. It's funny to see that. You know, I think it's funny to see the what it really looks like. You know, yeah, I mean? from on the inside, the behind the yes. scenes version. Yeah, exactly. You could yeah. do it as a do it as a set put it do it as a youtube thing with a link something and just check it out I'll tweet the tweet the link to it yeah these yeah days. yeah there's a lot of characters in the book now one of the things i do when i'm doing an audio book is when a character makes their first appearance i then i take a, that piece of that file and i store it in another file that is my voices file for that book so that if the character because right. sometimes i found that a character might come up early on in a book and they mightn't come up again until later, and I've forgotten how they went. Yeah, and I'll have to right, go. But right, this right. is just a quick way to go back. I don't have to go and find them in the, the book audio. I can just find them in my voices file. So every right. time, even just somebody like a bartender, you know, any, yeah. anybody who's a new voice, I, I save their voice. So I looked this morning at how many of those voices there are in this book. And I wonder if you would like to hazard a guess at what the, you may know. Oh, what the total I, I number? Don't. Now this is this is of minor and major characters. This is every different right. voice Ooh. that I had to do for the audiobook. If you have any idea what number you gave me, how many? Oh, um, I'll guess. I'll, I'll guess. I don't know because there are a lot of little, just quick interaction with side characters in the background. And guards, let me, let me, guards let, at castles, doorways, yeah, you do, yeah, oh, anything like yes, that. Yes, exactly. Um, I don't know, 60? It's 70. Oh, really? Yeah, you oh, wrote 70 wow. characters. Yeah, wow. 70 characters. That's a lot. That's a lot. That, that is a lot, <laughs> now that you say that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So, yeah, every guard, yeah, this, you know, every little person in the background that says something or yells something out in the background. Somebody will yell something in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's, there's, set, wow. there's 70 wow. voices in there. Yeah, that's a that's, lot. Uh, that's that's interesting perspective, but that's cool. Yeah. I mean, I had no, I, I never even thought about the number. I knew there were some background people, and you had great voices for all of them, by the way. Um, but, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And who is the book? To hear it. Who is the book for then? Who who would you who would enjoy this book? And the audio book, obviously, which is my side of it. Yeah, the bit, I, I'm, let the me, bit that I way, tagged Graham, onto. Let, <laughs> yeah. By the way, Graham, let me say I didn't get a chance, so we just kind of jumped right in, man. I couldn't believe you when I put this thing on ACX because this is my first time with all this stuff. Was you know, right? And I've been published in a little um non-fiction book but that was you know i just wrote it and sent it off it was one chapter with other youtubers and professionals so this is the first time writing a full novel we're going through the publishing process i had was so sick of hearing my own crap <laughs> <laughs> from all the different you know uh going through all the drafts and then editing and then having to accept or deny all the edits from the different editors and all that stuff but when you read this thing and i listened to this i was like holy crap <laughs> this does not sound like my book what and what i know you, you get this a lot because i've listened to some of your podcast clips you were outstanding i couldn't it, like you you your enunciations the voice everything the voices character voices, etc it really just sucks you in i'm telling you it didn't even sound like my book I actually enjoyed it again so i was sitting there reading along my own book listening to you you know for all the files i was just like this is really uh, amazing it really brings it to life it's it's pretty cool well thanks for that but it's really it's down to you because you've written such great characters if the characters are very cardboard and two-dimensional i haven't got a chance but when you write such rich characters it's just right. such a joy to do so right back at you uh, uh thank you was... thank you i really appreciate it but seriously man i mean you are really outstanding at this i mean as soon as especially that first couple of voices kick in, I was just, in, I was like, oh, wow, this is like, it's real. It made it real. Oh, well, that's good to so. know because to, to let people in on the inside, we did fall out at the very beginning, if you remember right. Oh, yeah. I, oh, man, you scared the hell out of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was having a, I was having a bad couple of days. It was totally my fault. 
And, and well, no, I, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, you got, I, I got to put some of that on me too because I mean, I first time again go reaching out to an audio professional, voiceover actor, where I'm saying you know pronounce something this way, and I didn't type it out exactly right. It was Ilya. And, it was Ilya. There was, yeah, a, was Ilya. there's a character in there called Ilya, and yes. and I got it I got it wrong, and then you corrected <laughs> me, and I did it again, and you went, no, it's still not right, and I'm like, I got no idea what this fellow wants. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I actually said to you, I said, oh, hell, I'm out. You know, I'm not doing it. And I then, know. And then like, you went, oh, no. please. And I went, oh, okay. And I was being I was being too precious and too much of a, as a lovey, as we well, call it. Well, I was here. sitting there thinking, but, oh, my God, what have I said? I mean, I, you know. I, <laughs> you haven't said me, anything. You, you, you're the author. You, you're, you're the one who should get it exactly how you want it. And I just I didn't get it for the, we got it, we got there in the end. I'm, it was what, yeah. two or three days we, we had a bit of an issue. But uh, so I, I, I just should should mention that in case anybody thinks, oh, I'll book this guy for a book because it's going to be plain sailing if I have a bad day. Yeah, and no, I don't plan no. on having a bad day. And I do apologize no, I, for that. I was out of order. But um, no, no, you're that. fine. I Look, I get it, man. I was because, you know, you would send the files. I'm supposed to listen and make any corrections. Yeah. And then I think what what added to that, though, wasn't just the Elia voice. But when I went back through to listen to the second. The, the, when you fixed Elia or the the second or first attempt, I mean, yeah. there was something else I just randomly caught. I said, "Hey, while you're in there, oh, this I, I just see. I didn't catch that before, and I think that may have been." A yeah, I think. Factor. Yeah, I think I'd got there. Well, why didn't he? And this, this was in the, this was in the first. I think the first hour of the book, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very early. And, yeah, and I, yeah, was, and right I was after... thinking, how many hours of this have I just signed up for? That was. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was where I was. If you if we'd have had that issue at hour four or six, I think we it wouldn't have been an issue. But because it was at the beginning, and I'm still I'm still finding my way. Because yeah. the the weird thing about this process is, is you've put your heart and soul into this work and big pieces of your life, and then you're handing it over to a complete stranger in another country, right. and then right. just waiting for it to come back, and it's not right. quite right. And like, and and I've never met you. We hadn't even spoken. This this is actually the first time yeah. we have had a conversation. Yeah, you, know, you could... sent me the audio file, uh, just of Elia to yeah. to make sure you had it right. But that was that was it. Other than that, we what really a conversation. So, yeah, yeah, we never yeah. had a two way conversation. So yeah. it is it is a a weird thing to to work out how to how to how to do it and uh right. i'm i'm getting better at that side of it all the time <laughs> but uh i'm so well, glad we help, pushed it doesn't on. help we have a country a country uh accent over here who's trying to figure out how to pronounce things myself <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the in a, time in a medieval in a medieval European world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that you've invented. Yeah, and exactly. uh, and also the time difference doesn't do us any favors either because it's yeah, always right. it's much much later in the day for me here than it is right. for you because right. I think I'm five hours ahead. So I'm yes. I'm all already I'm you know if you imagine if you're doing things at the beginning of the day when you're all kind of sharp and whatever and you know you're right. getting to just before lunchtime well for me that's that's like you know dinner time it's right. like I I'm, I don't want any more <laughs> it's I'm <laughs> kind of done and there was all that I think worked into it as well but we shouldn't dwell on that because we got through it and we came out it's a it's a terrific book i mean it's the book itself the crimson gods is a is a terrific book and you need to start with something great but it has i think turned into a wonderful audiobook i think it lends itself to I do too. audiobook yes. because the characters are so rich and i could have so much fun with them and and the and bring out the depths and and the, the nuances and everything and the yeah, I mean, it, it, it really brought it to life. The little nuance in your in the voices and your and your narration voice, and you know those little just every little inflection you can it really pulls it out. Because there were, I think I got like twenty six auditions on there, and you were the first one. And there was another one that was re another guy who was really good, but he didn't have that in that inflection, and the voices were all kind of similar. But I mean, it was really good. Don't get me wrong. But I was like, no, I got the. I'm going with this first guy, Graham. This is outstanding because it immediately. I had a buddy come over and listen um, to the sample, uh, and, uh, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, no, this is the, get him." <laughs> you know, so uh, were you thinking of, of a British uh, accent to start with? 
I was, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, I had people uh, that knew I was writing the book from the YouTube channel, like, you know, you need to do an audio book. I said, I'm not doing an audio book. <laughs> I, look, I, you don't want a redneck. Uh, you don't want a redneck doing a medieval fantasy. You got a proper British accent, and you brought all the British accents for every character. I mean, it was great. Yeah. So, yeah, they didn't want to hear me up here like this talking about a medieval work. You know, they don't want to hear that. <laughs> they may think they do. But you know you gotta have a proper British accent for a, 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 a medieval European story. I think I think it just fits. Yeah, I don't so, know. Uh, I, really, I, really I think we... I think you could. I think you could do it, but uh, I think it would sound different. But I'm, oh, I'm yeah, very yeah. I'm very lucky. I've lived all over Britain because because I've worked in radio and get fired a lot. And uh, <laughs> and thanks to thanks to no compete right. clauses in contracts i haven't i've had to move every time i've got fired and britain isn't really that big you know you move 200 right. miles and you you you're in you've gone through about 16 different accents by the time you get right. to the, to the destination so right. I, i've managed to pick up and and i use a lot of the people who i've met a lot of people who've called into phone in shows and stuff over the years uh right, for right. voices and stuff so it, finally it's all paying off um, yeah you, you you definitely have the repertoire for sure i mean you can see you can hear the and i don't know all the the different british accents but you can hear the northern and the scottish and all this kind of stuff and it really really brings it to life really helps a lot oh, so yeah you got you got the tools it was a joy to do. It is a fabulous book. It's called The Crimson Gods. It's by Chris M. Christian. Chris M. Yeah. Christian. That's the name. Just like yeah, you got that's... George R. R. Martin. We got Chris <laughs> M. Christian. Yeah, we had to put the M in there because there's a country singer named Chris Christian that if you Google, that's what comes up. So yeah, you don't want to... you don't want him on your coattails. You don't yeah, want him. That's right. Claiming any of this, any part yeah, he of was a seventy. He was a 70s singer, you know, just. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No, you don't want him. Anyway. You don't want him getting, getting any a piece of this action. It is a great book. In the description below, I'll uh, I'll put the links to where you can get it from from Audible. You can even sign up for a free trial of Audible for 30 days and get the book for yeah. free. Absolutely. And uh, I'll put your the smoke screen. What's the smoke screen address? The the uh, I'll put that uh, in there too of your website. Yeah, uh, youtube.com slash smoke screen bids one uh, is the YouTube URL. Maybe I can email that to you or something. But have you got uh, that on your I'll, website? If because if I put a link to the yeah, website, they can find everything there. I, it's I do. The I do. I'll because, put a link to uh, your we, we talk we talk about all these stories and we do live streams and break down other things too. So it's not, you know, and we'll talk about the book stuff as well. We'll have some book live streams and Q and A's as well on there, but yeah, on my website, Chris and Christian.com. There's a link to all that stuff. Great. And I'll have to get you back yeah. on because I do a show on podcast radio in the UK. It's a national station oh, yeah. on, on, uh, on, on the air, but the show is also a podcast, but it is a radio show. I'll, I'll get you to come on and talk about the podcast as well because, uh, That'll be that'll be interesting to find out about for UK listeners because I don't think they might find yeah. you otherwise. Um, true. So uh, true. unless, well, do you have overseas uh, subscribers? You probably do, don't you? It's a global world. I do. I, do. I, have, yeah. I have quite a few uh, over over across the pond and a few in Australia as well. Um, I don't know how many, um, but I do know some people that's reached out and commenters and and everything that they're all over the place. Honestly, it's it's pretty crazy. Great. Well, I'll get you on that too. But the important thing is if you like if you like a good read then you should pick up the you should pick up the book which is as a physical book it's as a, it's an ebook and it's also as an audio book too now obviously i favor the audio book version but we, however you prefer to get hey. your your dark medieval fantasy work this is that's, uh, right. that's what you got to do uh, chris has, has got you covered on whichever way you want to get it but it, it is really yeah. good, and it's it was a pleasure. It was a it was an honor, and it was and I'm really sorry about the bit at the very beginning <laughs> where we got off on the wrong foot, which was solely my fault. And uh, but we we got there, so uh, yeah, it's great. It's called the Crimson Gods. Yes, thank you so much, Graham. I really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, I'm glad we got through the little Elia thing <laughs> and <laughs> and completed the project because it is outstanding. It, the audio book is worth it. I've listened to my own audio book in the car as I'm driving around, and it feels like a different book than what I wrote because of your voice. So outstanding. Thank Brilliant. you. I really appreciate it.